This is a muscular system physiology presented by the SHRZB with reference color atlas of physiology by Agamemnon Disopoulos and Stefan C. Bernard. So we we'll start with the motor end plate. So we have visualized all how the action potential enters into the cell. So now the motor end plate. So now we need to know that you need to know that when you have the cells, when you have the cells. So now we have um, this um, myelin sheet. <coughs> so you have at this point, you need to know that this is a motor end plate here at this position. Then you have myelin sheet and here is a motor neuron. So at this motor plate, the motor plate is just a synapse which is produced between the nerve and the muscle cell. So now at this position, we visualize that we have the nerve ending, we have mitochondria, we have vesicles. All these vesicles are going to bind to the membrane now of the muscle cell. And now the membrane of the muscle cells, you need to know that in the membrane of muscle cells, we have um, we have this position, see these things here, which are um, acetylcholine. So we have at this position here, it's going to bind. So we have acetylcholine are going to bind. When acetylcholine bind, binds to this ionotrophic receptor, it causes the sodium ion to move inside and then potassium ion to move outside the cell. So now all this is going to, at the end plate, you have a quanta. So this quanta is going to rise up and then you have are going to have a nerve induced end plate current. So that is going to produce by the quanta at this position here. So now we have differences between the smooth muscles. We have um, you know, this difference between smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, and skeletal muscles. So you need to know that the first difference is that the motor end plate, the motor end plate only exists for skeletal muscles, for smooth muscles, and for smooth muscles and cardiac muscles, there is no motor end plate. The second one, we have fibers. The fibers here for smooth muscles are fusiform and short. The fibers for um, cardiac muscle are branch and the fibers for skeletal muscle are cylindrical and long that is 15 centimeters why that of small muscle is 0.2 millimeters so you can ac actually see if, if a brand or a, a, a feel of um, skeletal muscle so and then you have smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are very few. Cardiac muscles are many, and then um, some skeletal muscles are also few, depending on the muscles. Okay. The next one we have um, nucleus fiber. So we only have one nucleus in one smooth muscle, one nucleus in cardiac muscle, and then multiple nucleus inside um, skeletal muscle. Then we all have the sarcomere. You need to know that the sarcomere is the most essential. Um, most essential functional unit of a muscle. Sarcomere are not found inside um, smooth muscle. In smooth muscle, they instead use calmodulins in order to do their contraction. Sarcomere are found inside the cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle. The length inside cardiac muscle is 2.6 micrometers, and that inside the um, skeletal muscle is 3.65 micrometers. So the next one, we have electric coupling. So we have some, some electric coupling inside smooth muscle. In skeletal muscle, we have electric coupling. They are functional syncytium. And the electric coupling inside skeletal muscle is no. So the cells of skeletal muscle contract alone and independently. Why that? In smooth muscle and cardiac muscle, they are contracting together. Some in smooth muscle and then yes, in cardiac muscles. Then we have the next one, which is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum, we have less developed. Here is moduli developed, and there is highly developed inside skeletal muscle. Moduli inside cardiac muscle, and there's smooth muscles, um, um, mod um, less developed. Then the next one, we have some spontaneous, um, we have the pacemaking. So, what is there equilibrity of the cells to, to contract by themselves? That is a pacemaker. So you need to know that smooth muscles have some space making, um, space, uh, some space maker ability. That is, they are capable of producing their pace, their rhythm of contraction. That is one one per second to one per hour. So you can contract one time per second or to till one time per hour. Yeah, and for inside um, cardiac muscles, actually yes, one time per second. And then inside um, the um, skeletal muscle is no the only required nerve stimulus.
then you have the the if it is tetanizable the last one so for tetanization what is tetany tetany refers to a continuous contraction of a muscle which is due to a continuous action potential we need to know that what smooth muscles cannot they can be tetanized smooth muscles can be tetanized um cardiac muscles cannot be tetanized um uh, and skeletal muscles can be tetanized and let's see the reason why cardiac muscles cannot be tetanized we need to know that what the action potential normally in action potential we have what is called the relative um we have the relative refractory period and we have the absolute refractory period now we need to know that the um, absolute refractory period the time of contraction we have the relative refractory period we have absolute refractory period and we have the time of contraction of the the model of the muscle cell for cardiac muscle the time of contraction of the muscle cell is approximately equal to the absolute refractory period since the time of contraction is approximately equal to the actual absolute refractory period it implies that the um the the, the next action potential cannot cause a, a another contraction within that time this is why cardiac muscles are not tetanized why for skeletal muscle we need to know that what the contraction time is further large and further above compared to the um, action potential time action potential time is very small compared to the contraction time so it implies that what it implies that another action potential is going to add up the contraction of the skeletal muscle and for a smooth muscle and also another action potential is going to add up the contraction of skeletal muscle so you see that an infinite number of action potential are going to cause an infinite uh, um, contraction of the smooth muscle and that infinite contraction of the smooth muscle is called theta -ni. in cases of tetanus we which is a disease we have a, an opistotonous position that is the, the there's a locked jaw the jaw of the dead patient is going to be closed and continuously closed and is going to of course also have an extension of the neck and the extension of the back so now let's see the contraction apparatus so we start with the striated muscles of the skeletal muscle so we this is the muscle bundle and after that, that muscle bundle we have one muscle fiber called a myocyte and inside that muscle fiber we have multiple sarco mesh which is a functional unit of the cell so let's have the structure of sarcoma at the ends of the sarcoma we have the z disc at the middle of the sarcoma we have the m disc now the sarcoma has two main fibers we have fibers connected to the z disc associate are called the actin filament and then fibers connected here are called the um, myosin filament connected to the m disc are called the myosin filament now the intersection we have the intersection between actin and myosin filament here but now you need to know that what i bands are called the light bands that is the when when you see on the microscope when you see on the microscope the eye bands are much more white they are much more white why the a bands are much more darker so the a bands are much more dark so the eye bands are bar at the position where the axine filament does not intersect or interjoin with the myosin filament associate why the a bands are where the axine filament intersect to the position to the mg's as you can see here so these are the a bands they are approximately 1.6 micrometer and we have the i bands here this dimension here is one na 10 nanometers and here is one uh, six milli nanometers so 10 nanometer is for one uh, myosin filament and then six nanometer is for one actin filament now you need to know that one on the actin filament we have different things attached to it we have number one the tropomyosin and we have troponin you need to know that what troponin is divided into three main parts we have troponin ict so the first troponin so we have troponin ict so the first troponin troponin i is going to be attached to the actin filament troponin c is going to be attached to the calcium ion and then troponin t is going to be attached to the myosin head and also with the tropomyosin so these are the different um, things to, to know troponin t is going to be attached inside to tropomyosin and then um, um, tropomyosin is going to be attached to the um, to the head 
of the um, uh, myosin filament so now this is the m disc with the myosin filament as you can see here so now let's visualize the head of the myosin filament so we first see at this position here we have the motor domain you have the actin binding domain you have the nucleotide pocket so this is going to be the head here we have the neck the neck is going to be made up of the essential light chain and you have the regulatory light chain at this position here all this is going to be made up of two it is going to be 20 nanometers and here is going to be 150 nanometers so now <coughs> we have a um, sarcotubular system of the myocyte so now the sarcotubular two system of the myocyte you need to know that for an action potential to occur in the myocyte you first need to know the triad that occur in this system there's going to be a triad of one um sarcoplasm or there's going to be a triad of one uh, membrane of the of cell which is called the sarcolemma the one membrane of the cell and then two sarcoplasm sarco, um, sarcoplasmic um, reticulum this uh, membrane is called the sarcolemma and two sarcoplasmic reticulum and that is called the triad system so now so we have the trans the triad that the, that tri the, this t tubule actually is a triad of one sarcolemma and two sarcoplasmic reticulum and now what occurs is that when an action potential enters via the sarcolemma it is going to cause the is going to cause um, it's going to um, cause an action the action potential is going to cause now the binding of calcium to the ryanidine our um, receptors and that ryanidine receptor which are found on the sarcoplasmic reticulum are going to cause calcium ion to move out of the cell that is inside skeletal muscle and now inside the myocardium or the the myocyte what have inside the the, the cardiac muscle what happened is that this uh, this action potential is going to cause calcium ion to move um, from the sarcolemma into uh, into the cytosol into the sarcoplasmic into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the binding of the calcium ion to the sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to cause calcium ion to move out of the cell for of that um, that calcium ion channel and now here is a ryanidine receptor the action potential is going to cause the um, ryanidine receptor to open and calcium ion to move out so you need to know that what the start of contraction inside the muscle cell is going to be due to the release of calcium ion and that release of calcium ion occurred due to the release of calcium ion from the sarcoplasmic reticulum you need to know that in skeletal muscle these receptors are called ryanodine receptor which are stimulated when an action potential comes from the sarcolemma in the t-tubule system and that t-tubule system i finished to is a triad of two uh, one sarcolemma and two sarcoplasmic reticulum as you can see very clearly here so here is one sarcolemma two sarcoplasmic reticulum called the t-tubule so now this is so now let's visualize now how um, muscle contraction actually occurs so at start you have action potential action potential round receptors are going to be activated round receptor cause the um, calcium ion channel to be open calcium ion channel causes calcium ion to move out from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which are the modified rough endoplasmic reticulum in muscles out of the calcium uh, out of the um, of the, this, the out into the cytoplasm so now when calcium ion enters into the cytoplasm the first point is that calcium ion is going to bind to the um, the troponin fiber calcium ion is going to bind to troponin fiber now we need to know that what there is atp molecule there is normally you need to know that normally there is an atp molecule which is attached to um to this um, head there is normally an atp molecule attached to the head of an ADP normally there's an ADP molecule which is attached ATP molecule which is attached to the head of myosin now this calcium ion is going to cause the rotation you see that it's going to cause the rotation normally this is ATP and now when this ATP ATP causes the the the, the head of the myosin to not to be um, not to be attached to the the the, the, the troponin tropomyosin um, tropomyosin chain 
So now when calcium ion is going to bind to the troponin terminal, it's going to cause the rotation of the, uh, the light chain. That rotation of the light chain causes the tropomyosin to come in contact with this head of to the to, to contact with the myosin head. Now, when this tropomyosin comes in contact with the myosin head, now there is a reaction that is going to occur at the level of the myosin head. And that reaction, you have the ATPase is going to now break down the ADP, um, break down ATP to produce ADP and P. Now this is now going that breakdown is now going to cause now the um, the push of the the light chain. So you see that you see this um, this conformation now is going to have a different conformation from this one. So ADP plus myosin chain is a fifty degree uh, has a fifty degree angle, while ATP plus uh, myosin head is going to have a ninety degree angle. So you see that this push causes the contraction of the muscle. Then when ADP again comes out, there's going to be a push from 50 degree to 45 degree. And then next again, you are going to have an ATP is going to bind again to this position. And then that complex is going to, is going to uh, make that the, the, the chain becomes uh, loose, the, 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 the junction between the tropomyosin and the, the, the myosin head becomes loose. And this is now going to go back to 90 degree again. Now the binding again to another calcium is going to cause again the rotation, which is going to cause again another tropomyosin head to bind again with this um, uh, uh, myosin terminal. And now this is going to cause now the further contraction of the muscle. So this is what occurs inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And now you need to know that in cases of rigor mortis, which occur in case where you are dead, you have a permanent binding of ATP to this. Uh, you have no ATP inside the inside the cells. You see that in rigor mortis you are dead, so you are going to have no. ATP. So the no ATP is going to cause now a permanent contraction of your muscles called rigor mortis. So now let's continue to this other part, which is a muscle strength um, decreasing. So this is what is called tetanus. Let's see the definition of isometric contraction. And isometric contraction, as you can see, is a constant contraction with no change. Isometric contraction. Here you have contraction with no change in the um, length of the muscle that's an isometric contraction a contraction with no change in the length of muscle isotonic contraction is contraction with no change in the tension of the muscle or the force of the muscle the force of muscle is constant while isometric contraction the length of the muscle is constant so these are the different things to visualize here so these are active and passive uh, muscle force when you combine all the forces that you are going to have is in this case so from here you say thanks for your attention please don't forget to like and subscribe for this channel thank you